All right. I will call to order this meeting of the East Hampton Planning Board for Tuesday, March 12th, 2019. Uh, anybody here to speak to anything not on the agenda? All right. No minutes, no ANRs. Just the continued public hearing of Jeffrey Rowland and Topatico seeking a special permit at 14 Industrial Parkway. So, we had a few issues last time, right, with uh, ADA, whether that applied. Did we get yep. an answer on that? Yeah, and check with the architect. So th this being a private building doesn't require to have ADA okay. access. If Jeffrey were to hire a disabled person, mm -hmm. he would be under the federal guidelines required to accommodate them. Uh, but under the state guidelines... Or if he opened to the public or something, right? If it's open yeah, to the okay. public, then the state guidelines would mandate that he would have to build an okay. ADA accessible. And then... Yeah. So then the next issue, um, well, we had two. One was the question of the wetlands scenario. So where do we stand so with that? So we have a comment from Mallory Larkin, Conservation yeah. Commission, and they would like a condition saying that um, we shall basically apply for a request for determination of applicability um, prior to getting the building permit, okay, which is so fine. So in that come in springtime, we can deal with it. Okay, so yeah, okay. just to clarify, so I talked to Jeff a little bit about this this afternoon. This is not a typical scenario where we don't defer to the, I mean, we usually defer to their judgment, but we don't abdicate our role in approving a stormwater plan. This is a question about whether or not it's a jurisdictional wetland or not. So whether, and, and really I think the only person that, or the only group that can do that is the CONCOM. Mm -hmm. um, Mallory, I don't think was comfortable doing it. I'm certainly not comfortable with us doing that. So, um, and I think it's also complicated by the fact that everything is frozen and under snow right. at some point right now. So, I think what what the applicant is proposing, and we can talk about whether we're comfortable with it, is that we would, if everything else is satisfied, approve the special permit with a condition with this language here, which is basically that they will go to CONCOM and have a determination about whether or not there is a jurisdictional, jurisdictional wetland. If there isn't, they're good to go. They've satisfied the condition. If there is, the condition further requires that they comply with any other standards or yeah. requirements of the contract. And if contract. the plans change, we would have to come back to Right, and if, right. The, if that process <coughs> changes any of the plans um, that we've seen, they would come back to us and we would approve that. So I think we've sort of fought the push to abdicate our role in the stormwater plans and just let them do it, and I think that we should stick with that, but I think here it, it really is a determination that they have to make, yep. and the alternative would really be continue this until you know May when they can actually get things to defrost, and so I personally am okay with that concept if other people are too. Okay. I agree. I okay. This is a very well-written condition so, that covers us. Okay, so then the last issue had to do with the plan itself and whether there was um, an increase in whether the plan needed to be modified to address the change in the um, impervious surface. I think there was a, a bit of a discussion, Jeff, that you had with the city engineer as well as a brief and cryptic email yeah. from the city engineer. Do you want to share that with us? Yeah, I guess so. And I will ask, I will ask Terry to kind of give an update, but in this case, uh, the city city engineer's position is that um, if you look at certain of uh, the certain criteria, certain performance standards in the stormwater ordinance, it says that um, redevelopment projects um, must meet certain standards. And one of which is that um, the system must be designed so that post development peak discharge rates do not exceed ex exceed pre development peak discharge rates. <coughs> Um, and then it says to the maximum extent practicable. So my understanding, you know, through interpretation of this is that due to high groundwater and poor soils that the current design does not accomplish that. Yes, it does. It's, um, Dan's position was that it doesn't fully meet these the provisions, that the peak discharge is an increase over the current, um, the current development of the parcel, but his opinion is that it it's the maximum extent practicable, extent practicable okay. in this case. Can I so clarify? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Do you want, you okay, so these come directly from the state stormwater standards for wetland standards. Um, but this is actually not a redevelopment project, for one. This is new development, okay? But discharge is different from 
there was a little bit of confusion from Dan's perspective on volumes as opposed to discharge. Discharge is a rate, it's, you know, gallons per minute, you know, cubic mm -hmm. feet per second, so on, okay? Volume is a different thing, okay? And in terms of the regulations, volumes are related to infiltration, okay? Under the state stormwater standards, infiltration is required for certain kinds of conditions, certain soils. However, when you have very poor soils, if you can show that those soils will not accept or are not able to be infiltrated, then that portion of the standard is not required. And in this case, you cannot infiltrate. Okay? And I went around and around with Dan about this. There is no way that you can maintain the same volume when you develop a site if you cannot infiltrate. It's virtually impossible. It's a bean counting process. One, at one point you have three beans that go into the ground. Now those three beans can no longer go into the ground and they have to go into the stormwater system. Mm -hmm. So as, as a result, when you are designing a system like this, you're designing it to make sure that the infrastructure can continue to handle whatever was previously going into it. Okay, and that's what we've done. So that's a quantity calculation design. It is not a volume design. And that's where he is having issue, and I'm not sure whether he's confused about it. I've talked to a number of my associates. I'm like, I don't know if I'm missing something here, but as far as I know, the physics of everything I've ever learned, no, does not apply to producing volume if you can't infiltrate. Um, so I'm just going to turn around a little bit. <laughs> Uh, I just want to make sure that I understand what you said, and I appreciate the extra information you just gave us. If I'm understanding correctly, and I'm hoping, Jeff, that you can correct me where I'm off on this, uh, Dan does not feel that it fit perfectly. It didn't fit perfectly. Mm -hmm. However, what you said is that it was in the range of within the amount practicable. Is that the sense of, of the message that you just delivered to the board? <clears throat> yeah, I think that was what I was attempting to deliver. I mean, I think what Dan okay. wants to oh, yeah. identify, <laughs> it, yeah, I think what Dan wants to identify is that, in his opinion, it doesn't totally comply with the performance standards of this ordinance. However, it does, however, it does acknowledge that there the is... The ordinance gives us discretion right. to say you've done to the maximum extent practicable right. your efforts to make it fit. So In my memory, and I'm sorry, yep. my memory essentially said that what changed, if I remember, is that there's some bituminous surface that isn't going there. It's going to be gravel now where yeah. it was before. Yeah, it actually, be the clarification on that, we've gone back in bituminous because from a functionality site design with fork trucks and things like that, it's not practical to have the gravel. Okay. So, you so are that is it. not a good savings. So the plan is back to where it was yes. in the actual version yeah, that we have. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Chris, can, can I turn to you as the former CONCOM member and ask if this makes sense to you? I mean, it seems it, to me it that- It does. Uh, my, so my only like long-term concern is, I. so you are going to put a swale in the back still, right? Along the back oh, yeah. portion yeah. of the property. So I remember when, we, when the East Hampton Savings Bank went in, um, they have a swale as well mm -hmm. uh, to collect their stormwater for the exact same reason. Um, and it ended up becoming a pond because it could not drain because mm -hmm. of this. Oh, they were claiming that it infiltrated. Yeah, and it didn't. Yeah, that's and so they had to go back and redesign the whole thing. Yeah, so this I'm making is sure not that it's not going to be standing water. So this, this is designed to drain out. It has what's called a V-notch weir at the end of it. Uh -huh. so. This is slightly pitched from here to here, and then there's a, a concrete weir, it's just a V, mm -hmm. that goes down to the bottom and allows it to fully drain. Okay, so it will drain within 48 hours, 72 yes. hours, whatever the... Yeah, it drains in about 24 hours or less. Okay, good. Less thing you need to yeah. do is create a new wetland. So, so, I mean, to me, it seems like, um, you know, for this sort of stuff, the city engineer has the expertise. I mean, it's our determination that it's the maximum extent practicable or whatever mm -hmm. that standard is. I mean. I guess we probably, if we were going to do this, do it, you know, conditions that, I mean, that either either it meets the requirement or they've taken the steps to the maximum extent practicable to satisfy the stormwater permit. I mean, I don't know that it particularly matters. I think it gets us to the yeah, same Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, we're sort of semantics, but right. I mean, the bottom line, Dan's duty is to ensure that the city system is not going to be compromised. Right. And it, 
in what we're doing, it is not being compromised um, to any, right. any more that's, of that's an extent than what it is currently. Right. And that's definitely um, what Dan's email yeah. conveys. So, um, I don't know. Harry, you got any questions? Comments about any of this? No. Okay. Okay. Can we word right. the condition just right? You were pretty close, but I'd like to see if we can. Uh, the the or the finding about the, know, the condition. about the stormwater about the uh, concoms approval. It's this is what this is. Oh, this is yeah. The condition? This, this is, is the so language of the okay. condition that's drafted. So, uh, if people want to look through it, if you haven't read it, to make sure it makes sense to you, um, what I the way I described it generally was that they will either go and be told that there is no need for concom approval, or they will. Obtain concom approval and meet whatever conditions concom in, you know imposes. Okay, my and come back to us with a have, modification. My only concern is the last sentence that says any significant changes to the site or proposed site features as a result of this process shall be presented to the planning board. Did we define what significant is? To well, so what I or? what I would propose for that is change it to material, which is what we have as our yeah, standard yeah. generally mm -hmm. about any sort of deviation. Excellent. Um, and. Right. That can, and, and then the other thing is if there are changes where there's a question, the sort of question of whether it's material, we can handle administratively right. at a meeting without a public hearing, without notice. If, if they're on the fence, they can come to us and we can either say, that's not material, you're good to go, or if we think it is. So there's even an intermediate step there for the applicant to okay. avoid if there's a question about whether it's material or not. That's fine. I think they're pretty confident that they're not going to have to change anything or come back before us. So hopefully they're right and it's easy. Okay. <laughs> and then there is one. Uh, uh, there's a, uh, one additional amendment that isn't on that printed sheet. So um, it's where it says no building permit shall be issued in the event that this condition remains outstanding, or in the event that any other determination or order aside from a negative area determination. <clears throat> um, so there's a, probably there's an extra word in here somewhere. Um, I should say which is inclusive of the entire parcel. And one and and within 100 feet from the limit of work. Instead of that is, it would be which is. Which is inclusive of the entire parcel and within 100 feet from the limit of work. And within 100 feet from the limit. So it's intending to draw a bigger circle around <coughs> the area that needs to be considered. Okay. Have, have you, um, you so folks had a so chance to look at this? I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Is that the buffer zone? There's a 100 foot buffer zone for me well on it that they cannot work in. Right. Well, that, that needs to be you know, approved. approved by the yeah, yeah. commission. So yeah. the the note is that so the, the goal of the applicant, you know, from the applicant's perspective, the goal would be to get a negative area determination. Right, a negative determination. And that um, it shall not be just the parcel, but 100 feet from all the areas. From the limit of work. work? Yeah, from the limit of work. So it broadens the area that has to be considered as a ne negative area determination. I think it's just a negative determination. I think we can get rid of the area. Area? Is that right? I, I've never seen it called. I, 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 I haven't heard of a negative area determination. What about, there's also area. the phrase negative, negative work determination in there too. Yeah, I believe that all well, those words are uh, from the CMRs, so I'd be hesitant to remove because it matches references. existing language. Uh, matches yeah, so the determination. So this is not yeah. So the the top line is that um, you know what the because we're so the, there's really another scenario which is the board I think as as the chair said just continues this till May, and this process unfolds with the concom. Mm -hmm. uh, short of that, this is trying to queue up a clear expectation. So prior to, I, I am willing to. Well, it says right now it says prior to any application for or, or issuance, issuance of a building permit. permit. So that's yeah. really that's going to be the threshold where, in order to get a building permit for the project, you're going to need to be in front of the conservation commission, that's verifying fine. what's happening. Yeah, so getting a negative determination for right. the work, right? But I mean, it's a, it's a negative determination for the work proposed is what we're asking for. Um, I'm right. not sure about. But the, the whole parcel piece of it, what, how's that play into this? So my understanding of what the question is, is the work proposed, but relative to whether this is a jurisdictional wetland or a non-jurisdictional wetland. Oh, so, so it's, it's if there's another determination or order not related to this project, but that this project is within 100 feet of it, 
I think that's what that yeah, latitude says. Is that what that implies? So, is that what you're saying? Because it's saying uh, in the event that this condition remains right. outstanding, so we've already crossed off that, so we would say that, that there's nothing on land. Or in the event that any other determination or order, aside from a negative area determination, which is inclusive of the entire parcel and, and within 100 feet of the limit of work for which work is proposed is obtained, as well as a negative work determination for any work occurring in the buffer zone. So one of the one of the challenges with this is that <clears throat> when they add, when when some additional oh, information you do <clears throat> so okay so say if it, yeah let me just give an example <laughs> so what they're saying is it can't it's not I'm not carrying this so. <laughs> It, so they're, they're not asking you to just do a wetland delineation or, you know, of this triangle. If a wetland is here and it's 100 feet from the work area, oh, sure. you, you're, you're going to want to be, so basically they're saying all wetlands within 100 feet of where this is going. Well, right. This no, I mean, it, it would, you're, you're asking for a determination of applicability. Yeah. For the work being proposed, right. which right. includes resources includes over the parcel, right. yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's what I was just added, is just to make clear that because the language that's cut yeah. from the CMR, I think, is just the parcel. So I think it doesn't want to limit. I don't think Concom okay. wants to limit it more than what they normally yeah. look at. I don't think it expands it beyond okay. that. Yeah, no, that does that fine. make sense? I mean, that that's. It's what we would expect them to do. Exactly. Right. I think that's the thing is I think just the language cut from the CMR might actually be narrower than what their normal review would yeah. be. But that's what I need. Okay. Anyway, so uh, can I borrow your zoning bylaws so we can run through the? Yep. And then just one more question about. I just want to make sure that the because this is different than how the plan board has approached it for a long time. <coughs> to, I think in essence to offer the option to get the special permit granted and allow you to keep going to a point. Um, when you when you say that it's a determination of applicability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a clear understanding that there is a question about the, whether or not there are jurisdictional or not jurisdictional? Well, when you, when you file a determination of applicability, you can do a couple of things. You know there are wetlands, and you say, I just want you to determine this, you yeah. confirm this wetland line. Or you can say, I'm coming in as a resident, I might be building a house, whatever, and I want the conservation to weigh in and say whether I need to be doing the file. And that, that's what we'll be doing. Mm -hmm. And at the, so we will be doing the latter, saying, please just confirm we don't have a, a wetland issue that we need to follow up with. Okay. okay. And I just want to, I mean, so far, I think that the information submitted by itself would not be sufficient for the Conservation Commission to make that finding. Yes, it would. Yeah, see, that's I where think, I don't. I, mean, I think agree. that there's a question about the soils and the composition of the soils, whether they're, whether they're hydric. But in any well, event, that's something that, 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 that's that's the conservation right. commission should have to address that, right? I mean, they'll. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to prepare the hey. applicant in a sense <clears throat> that I, I'm not sure yeah. that. Um, yeah, what I was trying to explain before is, you know, what the conservation commission they don't need to come out and um, they they don't they, you don't have to have a delineation per se because if you can come out and say, well, you know, it looks like there might be wetlands, but they're not connected to what defines a BVW that it makes it jurisdictional, then they go, this this isn't something within our realm. Right, but I, I guess where I just want to draw the line is, is I think where you want to be preparing is that to tell the Conservation Commission that it's not connected hydrologic, hydro, hydrologically oh, yeah. without additional data, Right. They're not. you're not going to be giving them enough to, but that's to, to that's for the next yeah. step. That's between well, the only the only yeah. caution about just kicking this, just right. deferring this is that yeah. Yeah. it's an awareness. I mean, I, but I either I way, back. even if we continue this till May, they're going to have to get that determination anyway. So yep. this, I think, allows them to deal with that. What is hopefully a jurisdictional issue, otherwise meet any requirements, right. and we will. Yeah. And you may be right. I, I just feel like I was on the commission for seven years, and there wasn't one applicant that came in without wetlands delineated and said, "Hey, we don't have wetlands." Well, right, but yeah, I mean, so the, we, I mean, the point being though is, I mean, you can have all kinds of projects, and you know, somebody can come in and say, "Do I need to do a filing?" And then you're going to say, "Well, do an RDA, mm -hmm. and that sets the process Get forward." Well, yeah. It doesn't mean you have to go out and delineate anything because there may not be anything, you know. But you um, have to prove that. 
Well, that's what and that's what a well and scientist would do for you is well, go out there and sure. to determine where the well if, if might need be, be or not be. If if need be, right? You know, I mean, you can also say, I don't think there are any wetlands. Why should I pay for something? Yeah, but then someone can come in and say, I think there are. Yeah. Well, yeah, but who's going to do that? I mean, that's my point. It, it's not. It, it, well, you, I the think commission the, can't right. demand somebody go and hire a wetland scientist unless they have reason. But I think they do have reason. Cause well, so that's, awful. but the, again, that's the next step, right? So yeah. we're, I don't know. I'm speaking for the commission, so. Yeah, right. Right. It's, it's a good my, question. And, yeah. you know, and actually, I think I'll call Mark Stinson and ask him. That's a great idea. You know, um, because I don't, idea. I, I don't think it applies in every situation. You know? That's fair. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. Any other conditions on this? Oh, you got to go I don't think so. List. Let's go through these, these uh, criteria for approval real quickly here. So, um, first up, for special permits, conformance with the provisions of the ordinances of the City of East Hampton, general laws of Massachusetts, and all applicable rules and regulations of state and federal agencies. I think we've addressed all of that. Um, protection of city amenities and abutting properties through the minimizing of any detrimental or offensive uses or destruction of unique or important natural, scenic, or historic features on site. I don't think there's concern there. Uh, minimization of traffic and safety impacts of the proposed development on adjacent highways or roads and maximizes the convenience and safety of vehicular and pedestrian movement within the site. So we talked a little bit last time about sort of the delivery schedule. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty clear and easy parking lot scenario, yeah, exactly. not open to the public. Um, adequacy of methods of disposal of sewage and refuse and the drainage of surface and subsurface water. So we talked last time about the trash removal um, and the snow removal. We talked today about the stormwater, um, and I think that it's pretty clear that either the plan meets the requirements or it is, you know, they've done the maximum extent practical to comply with it, so I think that's not a problem. Um, adequate means of protecting wetlands, watersheds, aquifers, and well areas, same considerations as the stormwater. Um, mitigation of adverse impacts on the city's resources, including the effect of the city's water supply and distribution system, sewage collection and treatment systems, fire protection, and streets has little to no impact on that as it's largely just for warehouse. Uh, provision for the off-street loading and unloading of vehicles incidental to the normal operation of the establishment, parking, lighting, and internal traffic controls. We talked about the delivery schedule and the parking. I think we talked about lighting, where they're going to be located and they're going to be downward just facing. Lighting. And, yeah, yeah, so that'll be good. Um, and especially making sure it doesn't leave the property and yeah, go into other Adequate applicants' efforts to integrate the development into the existing landscape through design features such as vegetative buffers and retention of open space or agricultural land. I have not any issues with that to address. Um, minimization of the area over which existing vegetation is to be removed, where tree removal is required. Special attention is to be given to the planting of replacement trees. I don't think there's any trees being taken down for this, right? No. no. <clears throat> Uh, consistency of the development with respect to setback area, placement of parking, architectural style, landscaping of the surrounding buildings and development. No issues there. Adequacy of the measures to prevent pollution of surface or groundwater to minimize erosion and sedimentation and to minimize changes in groundwater levels, increased runoff and potential for flooding. We address the issues with the stormwater management plan. And adequacy of the methods to ensure that the use will not constitute a nuisance by reason of unacceptable level of air or water pollution, excessive noise, or visually flagrant structures and accessories. There's been no issues with that. So I, I would say, Jim, that it's um, the lengthy condition, and I don't think we need anything else. I think our findings will address the stormwater, and yeah. I don't think of it, I can't think of any other conditions unless anybody else. I agree. I, no, I think it's inherent that. <coughs> do I, are there any other changes to those that plan set? Um, well, we should. I should just give you a final plan set. Okay. Because we've switched back to the paper. <coughs> All right. So we'll days. have a revision date on it. Is it? Or are you gonna? Uh, Utility revisions. Um, I mean, the the, <laughs> the only change since since what I sent you last is changing changing this back to paved. And is that on that set there, or? Yeah, it's just written on. But I okay. can do so it's a planned date. When's when is that date of that? This set? is three four. Three four two thousand nineteen. Okay. Yeah. And I can leave that with you if you like, or I can send you another one. What I would like to have is a. So if you can send me another one electronically and then have one set printed. Because I think the last set I have printed are the, the, original? the earliest version, yeah. Okay. Not from. Okay. That's a little unusual for us not to have the plans at this point. Should I condition that in with the latest updated plans as part of this? Or do you just want that to be back channel with Jeff? Co-chair. Um, 
I don't think we need to make it an explicit condition. Okay. All right. I motion to approve the special permit for Jeffrey Rowland to Patico Co. Uh, at 14 Industrial Parkway with the one primary condition aforementioned. Do we need to read it into the... Into the I think we have a printed copy, but... Is that your call? Mr. Chair. I would say you don't need to. We, we don't since, need it's, to. since it's written okay. out, yeah, it we've all be, read it included. Yeah. And the applicants had a chance to look at it. Okay. Motion's on the floor. Seconded. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? All right. Good luck, folks. Thank so you. We'll, you're coming out. We'll get a decision. Uh, the meeting here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Why, why isn't this whole area mapped out, either by the city engineer or conservation? So when somebody's going to do something in this whole park, they can just go up and say, okay, this is off limits, that's off limits, and they can go and do what they got to do. Because we don't have a conservation agent. We just got one last year for the first time in a while, so they don't have... Well, how can it have an industrial park without knowing what you can even do with it? Not just there, but all up and down Route 10. The, the we have people everywhere. for the businesses that have been in there have been complaining about this being drained by this landlord yes. and that being Thank you. in their water. Flooding right. or not flooding. Island Ave. It's a problem for that whole area. Yeah. Yeah, Island Ave is fine. Uh, yeah, so that's so, so at, as projects come in, then we get them delineated. And that's the only way we really know exactly where everything is, and it changes. I think it has changed out there as well in the past years. Yeah. I think, so it, as a scenario that I get pretty frequently, a, a homeowner comes in and says, uh, <clears throat> I want to build you know, an addition, where are my property lines? Um, especially the street, the street facing property line. It's a common question, and it's a pretty painful discussion to tell them. Well, we don't determine that. You know, we're not going to go out. We don't have a surveyor. Right. Uh, you know, staff. Surveyor. Yeah, exactly. And we don't have a survey for everyone's property. It's a process where the person pursuing a project has to do that investigation. On their own. Folks in this day and age expect Wiki and Google to just have all, have these all the yeah. <laughs> and 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 sometimes you have state resource data, right? You know, and you can rely on it. Sometimes it's really good. But it's right, so we should fun. go by just by case by case then. Yeah. Or well, well, I mean, in, in this online. site, you know, for instance, you know, that might have been all wetlands back there. Yeah. But you know, it's all been completely it's worked. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, it's no longer. All right. So we go with all right, case yeah. by case. Then. Yeah. And right. it really will change. It, Within five, ten years, just by natural changes. Yeah. yeah. Well, with climate change and everything, yeah, you can find wetlands springing up everywhere. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Harry, I thought you had something. I thought we were going to X's and pitchforks yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> I offer a friendly motion to adjourn. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you all for.